Hey guys, in this video I'll be covering some of the five other plugins and probably some other bonus plugins that I think are very useful in Figma. So the first one is probably a very simple one, which is the palette plugin. The palette plugin actually allows you to obviously, uh, as the name suggests, pick a palette. So for example, if I actually click here, uh, there aren't really any buttons that you see here, but for example, you, if you actually click here and you can actually see some of the tooltips if you actually hover over it, if you keep on clicking, it, it, it keeps on rotating different colors and obviously you can pick which sort of a, what sort of colors you actually want. So for example, if you just want them for user interface, you're gonna get really light ones. And for the standard one, you're gonna get a wide variety of colors. If you, let's say, are comfortable with some of the colors, for example, I'm comfortable with these two, I can actually click it again and every other color is just gonna be fixed. Um, these two are gonna be fixed and every other color is actually gonna change. Then I can actually pick any other one that I like. For example, I like this one, I can lock it, and then I can search some other ones. And if I'm okay with all of them, I can just click save. And these are then uh, brought here, which you can again convert into um, color styles. The other one that I do want to talk about is the Lottie plugin. So let me just open the Lottie plugin. So the Lottie plugin obviously allows you to upload your own files here as well. But primarily what I want to talk about is using some of the Lottie animations that already exist. For example, if you wanna show a search loading animation, you can actually click here. And as you can see, this is, this is a great animation. And again, you can use that as a GIF in your designs as well. So let me just go ahead and create a desktop page and let me just add it. So once you add it, as you can see, it's here. And now I can open uh, the prototype view to actually see this GIF and let, let it just open. So here's the prototype view and the GIF should appear in the middle and as you can see it appears here. And one great thing about the Lottie plugin and the GIFs that it uploads, so most of the plug, most of the files that you see in Lottie can be used on the Devon as well. So obviously you can grab the SVGs as well, but apart from that, you can actually grab the JSON code, so on and so forth. And uh, you can use that with React as well. So that's again, really powerful. And you can actually use, for example, if I want to have, let's say, uh, confetti or anything along those lines. It's really great. Um, and you can find a lot of great animations here as animation here as well. So as an example, if you have a look at this one, I say convert to GIF, add to Figma, and it should be added soon. Yeah, I think it's added. So if we go ahead and have a look at it, so as you can see here, we have the confetti animation. And you can obviously go to the GIF you can actually uh, see what that looks like. You can obviously change some of the way that it's structured and yeah. So that's the Lottie plugin. The other plugin that I do want to talk about is the find and focus plugin. So let's say if I go to my particular design, so this is one of the designs that I've created and I actually just want to go ahead and select all uh, the layers that actually have a particular title. So for example, I wanna select all these tag layers. Well, currently, obviously, since they exist inside this frame, I can just press enter by going to the parent. But let's say this particular page actually had different, uh, a bunch of like these tags actually dragged here, dragged here, so on and so forth. And if I wanna select all of them, like there's no easy way to do that in Figma based on my knowledge. Even if you go, for example, on edit and you say select all with same property, it still doesn't select it. Similarly, if you go ahead and say edit, select all with same stroke, effect, fill, text, and font. Well, those can be quite different ones as well. If I actually just want to find a particular layer uh, by name, I can actually use the find and focus plugin. And I can say, I want to find all the tags. And once I do that, as you can see, all of my tags are selected and I can, let's say, apply a different color to them. For example, if I want to apply the green color, like as you can see that that's available as well. That's the other plugin that I do wanted to point out. One other plugin that I do want to point out is the Blobs plugin. And the Blobs plugin is primarily just for uh, visuals, creating blob visuals. So for example, if I go to the Blob plugin and I want to go ahead, I can change the complexity and contrast. And then I say make blob. And as you can see, we have a blob generated. These blobs are really used uh, quite much in dribble designs as well, um, based on today's aesthetics. Similarly to these blobs, obviously I can change the block shape as well by changing the complexity. I can make it even more complex as you can see here. And as I keep doing that, different types of blobs are being generated. 
Uh, a few other plugins that I'm going to categorize under the blob plugin because I just want to give you that information are, for example, the dots grid plugin. So for example, with the dots grid, I can actually, like once that actually opens, as you can see, I can actually generate a bunch of dots automatically by that particular plugin. So that can also be useful um, when you're actually creating your dribble designs and you or you want to have like that presentation there as well. Similarly for dribble, you have the fizzy plugin. And with the fizzy plugin, you can go ahead and you can select the random circles that you want, the diameter for them, the colors that you want this plugin to generate. For example, I want these colors to be generated. And let's say if I, sorry, I actually have to create a shape here. I'm going to open it again. And then let's say if I say fizzy it, as you can see, some random colors are generated. And again, these can also be used in your dribble designs as well. Similarly, I have the get waves plugin, which is all which does something similar. It allows you to generate waves, which you can use in your designs as well. So again, you can be really fancy here. These waves can have uh, a really light effect, uh, which really looks good in, let's say, some of your dribble designs. I'm going to give it a opaci opacity and I'm going to give it a linear gradient. And as you can see, once we apply the linear gradient, I personally think like again, uh, stuff like this actually looks good and sorry, let me just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to increase the opacity of the gradient. And as you can see, if we do something like this, this looks good and you can have really powerful effects like um, like this using the using all of the blobs plugin, the, flip, the fizzy plugin, the waves plugin and the dot grid to actually really make your uh, fig, uh, make your dribble designs or behance designs much more presentable. Again, saving the best for last, I want to talk about the Design System Manager plugin. Well, the Design System Manager plugin actually allows you to organize your design system. For example, here I have a bunch of components created. It tells me where they are. For example, if I actually want to drag them around, I want to structure them in a different way. As soon as I click on them, I actually see where they're actually presented. This plugin actually uh, costs you. I don't think that I think like it's ten dollars or something, but it's like re a really low price. And it's really beneficial if you're, especially if you're working on large teams. So you can easily select uh, the components. You can go to them. You can also manage your color styles here as well. Um, you can also, again, go ahead and look at some of the video tutorials here as well. You can actually manage your text styles as well. So let me just go to a file that has a lot of these things, a lot of um, component styles, a lot of, again, um, design system style. So let's say if I go to my design system library and now if I open the plugin, let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to my design system organizer. As you can see, we have a lot of components. We have a lot of colors, a lot of text styles. I can again go ahead, rename the groups really easily. I can again, as you can see here, um, group them. I can move them to specific places. I can also see my uh, effects and I can also see some of the grid styles, which I don't really have right now. One really powerful feature, extremely powerful feature of the Design System Manager is actually uh, linking and delinking uh, components. So for example, I have this particular design that I've created. And as you can see, we have a house block component, and which is actually this one, the one um, that you see above. Now, let's say if I copy this file and if I, let's say, move it to my... Um, this learn Figma file. Now, once I do that, as you can see, these component, the house block, com the house block frames are actually now detached. They're not coming with the actual component. Neither are they coming with the styles that are there. So, I mean, all of this is unlinked and this file to me is not, this particular frame to me is no longer useful because again, all of the components are now unlinked, which really makes, which, which is just something that, that's just not powerful. So imagine if you wanted to move a particular frame with all to a separate file with the components attached to it. How would you go about doing that? Well, you can do that with the design system manager. So let's say uh, if I actually have, for example, if I actually just want to copy this and I want to, let's say, keep all of these style linked, what would I do? Well, first of all, I'll go ahead, I'll copy this and I'll copy this in my learn Figma file. So here you go. I have this and obviously if I now go ahead to my, uh, first of all, I have to go to my uh, Learn Figma file. I have to open my Design System Manager. I'll actually go ahead and I'll click on this particular component. I'm going to say I'm going to I want to mark this as a target because I want to relink some of the instances on the separate 
on the other file to actually this particular component that I selected. I'm going to open the, the, the design system manager here as well. Now, as you can see, this particular uh, component that's here is actually linked to this component that exists in the same file. So what I basically want to do is I want to say apply uh, the linked, the thing that I actually linked, I marked this particular component that lives in the separate file. And I want to say I want to link all of the instances on this document uh, and I just want to link them. So for example, I can go ahead and I can say relink. And once I do that, it's going to take some time and it's going to relink all of the instances that you see here to the component that exists in a separate file. So obviously it says library is not connected or components are not published because I haven't published this. So obviously you have to publish your components as well for them to be accessible in a separate file. So once I have done that and let me just go ahead and mark as target again. And now let's see if I go ahead and do the same thing and say relink. It says 16 instances were relinked in the document. And now if I actually go ahead and have a look at this house block component and I click uh, go to the main component in the library, as you can see, this component is actually now coming from this library. And now I can easily go ahead, I can copy it and I can drag it here. And as you can see, this component is linked. Those are really great ways in which this design system manager helps you. Again, you can also do some other powerful things. For example, if I actually go ahead and select all of these things by pressing the command A key by selecting all of them, I can say export. And once I do that, I can go to my learn Figma file uh, and I can say import. You see the import button here. As soon as I click on the import button, as you can see, all of the colors are automatically transferred to this file. I don't have to do all of those things manually. All of this is done really, really, really effectively and it just eases your workflow quite a lot. So again, those are the plugins that I did want to point out. Again, the design system manager especially is an extremely powerful plugin. If you're working on a larger team, you're going to be moving your files around. You think you're going to encounter a lot of these things. I definitely suggest buying that. Like I'm not sponsored by them or anything. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, do let me know if you want to see anything else. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.